What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And I am here with my Russo Red Pastel Hypo, possible Super Hypo, Sterling Boa. Sterling is a recessive trait that actually uh, removes all the saddles. So while it still has some kind of a, a small stripe, it has nothing on the dorsal aspect. So Boas are known for their saddles. These have none, They're, it's patternless we call it. This is the patternless Boa. And there's so much that can be done with this project. I'm so, I'm so entrenched in it right now from the albino and sun glow form of it to um, possible next year producing maybe a blood sterling. Um, but I've been working with the last couple of years is this Russo Red Pastel line. Now, just for those of you who don't know, in Boas, Pastel is not like a, a, an inherited trait, like it's a recessive you know, dominant or incomplete dominant. It's actually polygenic. Polygenic, what that means is that there's multiple genes that add to together to, to, to give a certain you know, trait that you can see. So if we're going for red, for instance, then Russo, for 25 years, bred the reddest boas to the reddest boas. So multiple genes contributed to his boas looking red. And after 25 years, he got a very red looking snake without using any kind of you know, gene mutations, just by selective breeding. He bred uh, one of his Russo Red Pastels to a Sterling Boa. Uh, I believe it was a Hypo Sterling, or possibly maybe his, his was a Hypo Russo Red. And they produced Hypo Russo Red Pastel Het Sterling Babies. And in 2014, I bought a pair of them from him, and I went off to the races. And in 17, I made my first litter, and then this was my uh, second litter. This boy actually was made from the first litter. He is a... Once again, you can see that red tail. He is a Russo Red Pastel. And remember, not every baby will be Russo Red Pastel. You gotta see if it's, if it's expressing those, those genes. If you breed Russo Red Pastel, Russo Red Pastel, you're gonna get a lot of Russo Red Pastels, obviously, but if you outcross them, you might not get so many. So you gotta really selectively breed for the ones that are the most red. This boy, obviously, is a visual sterling. He is hypo, possible super hypo, and then, of course, he's got the Russo Red. So I bred him back to his mama. Uh, last year in 2020, and we produced some amazing, amazing looking babies. Uh, a lot of visual sterlings. Um, all the non-visuals are 100% het, um, and we have some really nice babies that I haven't even listed up. I've sold a bunch of them because people have reached out to me because they've seen them in my videos, but um, I'm going to show you some of these that are available and some of the amazing variations because the great thing about sterling is that even though you think, well, they're all patternless, they all look different. They all have different, you know, different um, uh, contrast, different expression of the red gene, different expression of darkness and lightness, and their eyes all look a little different. You know, you can see this guy's eyes are very light, um, but some of them are really red. I mean, almost like looking albino-ish red. Uh, the mother was like that. So you, what you have to understand is that the reason why this is such an interesting project and people really enjoy it is because the snakes look so different. Not a single sterling looks the same. Um, and anyone who breeds them will tell you that, you know, because they see it in their collection. So I can never have too many of these. I want to hold them all back, actually, <laughs> but I can't. And so we're going to go into this uh, baby racks and we're going to take a look at some of these sterlings. I'm going to actually take them outside because it's such a beautiful day outside and hopefully you guys can get a, a true appreciation with the Sterling Boa. We took some uh, of our Sterling Boas outside here, these little babies that I hatched, hatched, <laughs> that were birthed this past year. These are 2020s. And I wanna show you some of the babies and give you guys an update. And these are just two of them. This one's a male and this one's a female over here. And I wanna show you the differences because there is a big difference. First of all, Look at this one's red, red eyes. How awesome is that? Now, as you saw the, before, the parents are from the Russo Red Pastel line. And in Boa's Pastel is not a genetic, uh, like incomplete dominant, dominant, recessive. It's polygenic, meaning many genes contribute to the way these things look. So it's inherited in, in more of a haphazard fashion. But I bred. Russo red to Russo red here to get these um, babies. So you're gonna see a lot of Russo red in there. You see the red eye. And once again, the reddest to the reddest. Then Russo bred for 20 years to get this Russo red in there. Look at that 
This is a probably a hypo. I don't think this is a super hypo. It looks hypo. This is a hypo sterling. Sterling being obviously that patternless boa. And there is some pattern, but you can see like some, some side striping along here, but there's no saddles whatsoever. And I don't want to bother this, these, these guys too much because they did eat yesterday. Um, beautiful black tongue she's got. And just a really cool looking sterling because of all the black contrast. Now it almost looks like IMG-ish in there, but some of them get that, that, that darkness in them. Now, if you come over, that's, excuse me, that's a male. Now this is the female I want to show you. She is completely saturated with red. Um, this is a very high expression Russo red pastel sterling. Once again, with the really, really nice red eyes completely saturated red body. You don't see that darkness in there. She could be super hypo. Both parents were hypos. Uh, she could be a super hypo. And that could be also why she has a lot more red in her, but let's put her here for a second without disturbing her too much. And you can just see the, the red that is saturating this entire body. Interestingly, this boy has a redder tail than she does, right? Hers is red, but not as red as his, but her whole body is, is red. So the Russo red um, expression is, once again, because it's polygenic, meaning multi-genes contributing to that red look, you're gonna see a very, very different expression in every single snake that you produce. These, these snakes um, are really, really, have great temperaments. These sterlings, I find at least. They get big, some of them. Um, I have some big ones. I have some ones that are not so big. Um, my, the, one, the one mama is very big. This is a really nice female that is available still. Some of them were sold. I'm not gonna show you the ones that are sold because then you'll want the ones that are sold. But I think this is one of the top best females that we've made this past year. And she's gorgeous. And once again, you can see the difference between this and this. And the funny thing is that he's got better eyes than she does, redder eyes, but not the rest of the body. So different expression, different snake. I wanted to show you this one. This is a male Russo red hypo, possible super hypo, um, het sterling. This is 100% het sterling. Look at the, look at that cross on its nose. How, how cool is that? It's a head spear with a cross through it. Really nice looking. Look at it rearing up like a, like a cobra. And look at the red saturation in the tail, the really diffuse saddles. Because what happens is when you have hypo or super hypo, it wipes out a lot of the saddles or changes the saddles over. But you can see that red, that tail is definitely red and the whole body is completely saturated. This, for not being a visual sterling, this, this animal is exquisitely High expressive for Russo red pastel. Obviously, the hypo gene and super possible super hypo um, homozygous is in this animal and is 100% head sterling. Much more affordable because it's not a visual sterling, but very dramatic. I love that. I almost want to keep her just for the for the X, that little cross on its on its head. That's a male. Now this is a female. Um, Russo red, very, very light colored with a lot of red saturation in the tail. Very similar to the way the mother looked of this clutch. Look at those red eyes. Let's see if we can take her out and not disturb her too much here. She did eat, once again, I don't wanna... I feed my boas very small meals when they're first born, so I'm not too concerned, you know, any kind of agitation. I'm not really gonna agitate her too much, but look at the red eye. Look at that red tail. That is an, a crazy, crazy red, red tail. Very diffuse. I would probably call this a super hypo, you know, although there is some darkness in the head. So there's a, there's a lot of contrast with this snake, which I like. You have the red in the eyes. You have the red throughout the entire body, including the tail, which is super red. Remember, there's no blood gene in here. This is just the Russo red pastel. And then you have no no pattern whatsoever. So this this female is A plus as I have written on the tag. 
and I think someone's gonna get very lucky. Once again, I haven't even listed these. I've sold a couple of these guys just because I've done videos on them before. They're growing nicely, progressing nicely. Once again, I like to slow grow my boas as babies. Uh, they seem to do better for that first year, and then you can start, you know, increasing the food size when they hit that one year mark, and that's when they kind of get a little more bulletproof. Now let's let's take out this this other female here, who is also really really nice. Okay, she's a um, also Russo red pastel. Look at that tail. She doesn't even have any. It's like continuously red. The eye is a little different. It's a little on the lighter side. It's red but lighter. Than this, than this girl. Once again, you can see I haven't. I've shown you a bunch of these now, and you haven't seen one that looks exactly the same because they don't. They all have their own identity, even though they have no saddles. They're all patternless. They all look completely different. This one has a lot of red, a lot of lightness, but then it has the darkness of the head and the darkness of that like side stripe, and then you can actually even see the pink, uh, the pinkness on the side, which is, which is what I would almost say is you know part of that Russo red expression. So, two completely different females. Um, once again, if you want to go for a visual, we have visuals. If you want to go for a het, we have hats. I'm going to show you one more little load of these guys. Now, here's a really cool looking male that I produced. This is a fully striped animal, okay? This is, once again, a het sterling. Russo red, let's put him over here. Yeah, so we can get a little better look at him. So he's got that the red saturation throughout but a, almost a complete stripe that just breaks it right at the tail here, but his whole body is completely striped. And what a nice looking head spear he's got on him. Once again, completely unique looking. These, all these sterlings and head sterlings look completely different. Not a single snake looks the same. And he's gorgeous. And then we'll, I'm gonna show you another, um, another one. It looks like it must bite me. And this one is almost, it's not quite all the way striped. He almost looks labyrinth, this one. He's a little, he's, he's angry for something. He wants to digest his food. He's lighter though. He's a lot lighter. And I don't know if this, if one is super hypo, one is hypo, but terrific head spear. Once again, this is a 100% head sterling. These are both Russo red pastels, hypo and super hypo. I can't confirm if, if they're super hypos. They're definitely both hypos and 100% head sterling. So you could take a visual female like that, combine with a het male if you want, or you could do a het female and combine with a visual fe uh, visual uh, male, or you could do two heads even. That's how I made my first sterlings with two heads. But these, uh, the heads are terrific that I made this year. They're really high expression. And once again, you get high expression Russo red pastel when you breed pastel to pastel. And that's what I did. And both were, at least both were hypo. So we have a lot of hypo and super hypo stuff. So once again, I wanted to just update you guys on this project. I really love it. These guys are at the point where they're really, they're, they definitely could be shipped now. You know, I'm, I feel comfortable. They're eating very, very religiously. Um, certainly they're at that stage where you can start upping their food. I'm, I'm still giving them small prey items, but they could probably go to small rats now and they'd start putting some real nice size on, especially the females. So... Once again, if you're looking for something unique and different, I love the Sterling project. I think it's it's something that a lot still can be done with uh, in terms of infusing color and saturation into. And I have a lot of pl big plans in the future for that. So if this is something you want to get into, let me know, hit me up. Uh, some of these snakes are going to be listed up on Morph Market in the next you know week or two, hopefully. And you guys, uh, if you want to reach me before that so that no one snatches them up, just hit me up on the email or email or text messages or however you want to do it. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed this little quick hit. Uh, no, so far, no uh, ball python clutches on the ground. No eggs, but we have a lot of females bellying up probably by tomorrow. We're going to have a lot more eggs to show you guys. Uh, so I figured I'd show you this little sterling project. Uh, it's really something that is really near and dear to my heart. I love this project. If you like a nice size bow, these these are not dwarf bows. These bows get will get you know decent size, six to eight feet, depending on how much you feed them, of course. And this is a true Colombian uh, morph. And once again, that Russo red pastel makes these things so unique. You cannot get these just anywhere, you know. And uh, 
I've sold a bunch of these over the years and people are very happy. And you know what you notice? As they get older, they get redder. Um, it's, it's almost like orange dream in, in ball pythons. As they get older, they get more orange. Well, these, these things get redder and redder. And so this male has been terrific for me. And you can see he's, he's, he's not a big snake. I don't keep my males big at all because they breed better when they're a little on the small side. However, the mother is, is, is a lot bigger than this. So it depends. Once again, females need to be bigger so they can you know, deliver the babies. The males just need to be um, have enough size in them so that they're healthy, but not too much where they get lazy and sluggish. Hope you're having a great day. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, hit the like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.